I listen to anything with the uh, 432 frequency. But it's, it's possible that for everybody. But that's me. Anybody else could yeah. be different. You know, I yeah, don't know that. Sure. That's, that's what I, I wanted to point know. out. For if anybody else, it could be uh, slightly a higher or lower frequency. Mm -hmm. Because what I hear when I interact with people, I often hear frequencies of the people and of the plants and everything around me. So I also hear the frequency. Basically, your force is all already giving your frequency away in some sort. Yeah, I've always heard of buzzing, dude. It's driven me nuts. I never knew what it was. Now I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's exactly what it is. You hear hey, the frequency, uh, and if you actually... Oh, Ty, you and I need to talk. Could, 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 <laughs> I, could, I, uh, if you actually, could I engage, bro, could I engage yeah. bro Sanchez for a second? Yes, oh, for sure, dude. I'm just wondering if I could... I, Bro, I just wanted, I want to tell you, man. I think you are, you are filled with wisdom and you speak, when you start speaking from the, from your, the heart and you, you give your, you know, you give your knowledge. It, it's some, sometimes it's the most mind blowing stuff I've ever heard. Someone who I, I've tried to watch, I've tried to engage your channel and listen to some of your live streams and stuff it, it's like a lot of times it gets so convoluted with chaos and people diverting the conversation and uh, drama and whatever i just i just want to implore you like insert yourself more into your channel take control what? of that take control of that I mean, I think you have so much to offer. I think you have an incredible wisdom. And mm -hmm. I just, I love what you have to say. Every time I hear you speak, it moves me, man. I'm just telling you honestly. Me too. I'm with you, Ty. That's what makes a quality, excellent show. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, if she wanted to uh, create another channel called, just say, Flat Earth Royal Rumble. Anything goes, <laughs> any and everybody come right. up here and you come up here and put your gloves on, let's go, to filter out, yeah. you know what I mean? Because uh, the average globe head is a beer drinking, ready to argue, think you know everything, <laughs> you know, and I want to build a platform for those people. I want to deal with those that. dickheads. I love them. I like when they come up there. Yeah, but you do. And can I say oh. something quick? Because I'm on your panel quite a bit. And I like that. I like that he challenges people constantly and and, and teaches them yeah. at the same time. You know? All right. Uh, no, hey, Santos. Yeah. Oh, just no, Santos. Say. Yeah. yeah, Santos. Hey, Santos. Hi, Hello. Santos. Hello, Santos. Hey, hey Santos. Santos. What's like good, that. man? What's good, my, my brother. brother? Yeah. Hey, how are you, bro, Sanchez? I'm glad hey, I'm you. Good. I'm glad you're hanging out with this group, and um, I've had a few good, uh, good hangouts here, so it's a great spot to meet, man. Yeah. Yes, it is, man, and I, I finally met up with you on here, so that proves that you're telling the truth. Hey, I'm, I'm yeah. just glad that, that you're here, man. Um, I know everybody on the panel got questions for you, so I'm going to hold mine, and I just want to say thanks, Santos, for uh, coming up here, man, because I've been dying to speak with you. I love your work. And I just been wanting to question you on a couple of things. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Yep. Can I just Great. say who's on the chat with you, Santos, and then you can go back to um, Bro Sanchez. You know, artists. There's, there's obviously Bro Sanchez, Black Trotters, FPV, Karen B, Marlena's waving, and we've got Ty from Flat Revival Magazine and Josh, me. I have to say hello, oh, Santos, because you and I talk in Facebook all the time. I never got to talk to you, talk to you this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad you came. I can't wait to listen to what you and Brother Sanchez have to talk about together. Oh, I'm really nice. excited. Look Karen, this is so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had such a disaster. Yes. Over, I, I know. <laughs> this is great. Sanchez was going to make it. We've had uh, big dread on. It's just been like the panel's just been buzzing. Mm-hmm. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's probably a great day to be on this hangout. <laughs> it is. Okay, bro, Sanchez. Ask Santos then. Oh, well, I was just had a little quick, simple question. I was going to ask you, 
what do you think about because in a lot of your videos i hear you talk about the elites and uh we know we both deal with etymology we know that the elites is dealing with l which is the saturn god l and uh we know that they are hiding a lot of knowledge and secrecy but what is this whole saturnian concept in your understanding is it necessarily something evil or is it something that we all need to be tapping into that they're just hiding uh <clears throat> it's a necessary evil brother um the the l branch of uh theology is one half the other is the geoistic and jupiterian l is saturnian <clears throat> and the geoistic branch is um Jupiterian. Uh, uh, so Saturn becomes Paul, Apollo, uh, and Jupiter becomes um, Jah, Jehovah. So you've got yellowistics and your geoistics, okay? Saturn and Jupiter. It's always been that way, it always will. So you've got Paul and Peter. Jupiter is Jupiter. So you rob from Peter to take, to give to Paul, okay? So in astrology, Saturn's the greater malefic. In astrology, Jupiter is the greater benefic. Saturn represents time. Jupiter represents space. <clears throat> can't be space without Jupiter. Can't be time without Kronos. One castrates the other. So Saturn's time component is a necessary evil. In time, all things corrode, oxidize, die, perish, destroy, you know, corrupt. And Jupiter expands is the other half, uh, time, uh, space and, and abundance and expansion and magnanimity and, and goodness. God. That's why Jupiter is God. Now, <clears throat> there's a constellation in Aries called Triangulum. And, uh, well, it's a triangle. Triangulum means triangle. And um, <clears throat> the top star of that triangle, it's, it's a, a isosceles triangle. So it's not a, you know, like a equilateral or anything like that so the top part is very distinguished from the other two and that um star is called the most high anu a-n-u that's the most high god in, in aries of course it corresponds to the pineal gland the triangulum and next door in Taurus, you have the Pleiades, who correspond to the uh, pituitary body. As you look up in the skies, every constellation is your body. Man is the measure of the universe. So <clears throat> the other two stars are Enlil, El. Enlil becomes El. And the other star is Eya, which becomes Jehovah, Jah. And that is the twin, the twins. <clears throat> they are the twins, the Demiurge, Saturn and um, Jupiter. Jupiter. One's a Titan, the other one is an Olympian. Uh, Jupiter is the Olympian who defeats the Titan, Titan, his father, and castrates him. So this twin energy <clears throat> yeah, is essentially the death energy and the, the life energy. Uh, the Saturnian work that the Satanists do, these elites, uh, they do the other half. They do the bad half. They're taking care of all of that and thank goodness that they are because otherwise it might be you. So you uh, accept what's going on. All things are as they should be. Not all things are perfect, but they are as they should be. And the evil ones are doing their deeds so that they will merit their recompense at the end. The goats and the good ones, the sheep, are doing now, their deeds and they will merit their recompense. Now, that's very interesting that you bring up, uh, you bring up uh, Saturn and Jupiter as Peter and Paul and as yin and yang. Uh, that's coming from, that's astrologically coming from a more Greek perspective. Now, I, I deal with astrology from a more uh, it's not a Greek perspective. I was just say just purely ancient. Now, when I look up and I look at yin and yang, I think sun and moon. Let me ask you another question, Santos. Where would darkness come into spectrum? Because one thing that I teach is that darkness is a centering agent 
and it's related to this, like like you said, the satanic people wear black or darkness. Well, I associate it with the womb and creativity. Like you you say that the most high God is I knew. And uh, I associate that deity with a time, an uh, annual time, where like a harvest time, while we say words like annual or annual, when I say annual or annual times, associating with the, the, the times where we go in, back and forth in between the darkness, like you said, life and death, to renew ourselves. So in other words, reincarnation, um, but I like the perspective you give with Saturn and Jupiter. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you about Saturn itself is not necessarily as a planet or a wandering star, but the symbol itself dealing with balance. What you think about that, like the circle with the line in it and the whole uh, concept of, of Saturn? Yeah, Can well, I ask Saturn, you both yeah. a question real quick. Real okay, quick. The, qu the question is, what do you think about the whole concept of Saturn, meaning that the symbol of it is a circle with a line through it, like the yin-yang, everything we talk about Saturn is just what Santo said, life and death, which is sandwiched in between darkness and also um, the fact that they, they got it dealing with Satanism and all of the spooky stuff. Should we try to see what they trying to make us scared of and scares away from? Basically. Well, 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 they've unbalanced us. We should embrace Saturn, which is black light, dielectricity, resting light. And we should embrace white light, magnetism, Jupiterian light, the beautiful blue hues of Jupiter, the healing rays of Jupiter. So Jupiter is Jupiter Zeus, Jesus, and Saturn is Satan. It's Jesus and Satan, Peter and Paul. Adam and Eve, Esau and Enoch, Cain and Abel. It's the forever twins. Anu, Anu, the most high, is Uranu, Uranus, the heavens. And it is true that it is annual. Yes, because it is transcendental time. So the annual time that we experience is mundane time. Okay? It has three tenses. But time is also spiritual. Okay? Time is transcendental. It, it is born of no time, which is time. So, so can the I forever, the forever make, now, and and hold hold the question because I just want to um, uh, uh, point out that Greek astrology is no different to any other ancient astrology. Um, I just did a hangout in Spanish, and one of the questions was. <clears throat> was about astrology and, and, and it's, you know, it's fidelity and whether there should be 13 signs, etc. The way I present astrology is the only, only way to present astrology with the natural system, the ecliptic, etc. Yeah, most of the listeners know what I'm talking about. Uh, so <clears throat> this is the only way to do it. So there are 12 signs and uh, there are many astrologers even who will tell you Things like, oh, the Greeks came along and introduced Libra. Libra didn't exist before the Greeks. Okay. No, well, I wouldn't tell you that. Well, no, I know, I know, you wouldn't. <laughs> but <laughs> some do. Now, you go to the Dendera Stone in Egypt and you will see not only 12 constellations just as we know them, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. Mm -hmm. No difference. And, and not see, only will you, see, and, you see, not only will you see and, that, and but I, you'll see that the thirty-six deacons that we still have, which we call the Ptolemaic deacons. So, um, yeah, ancient astrology is exactly what I'm teaching. Ancient Egyptian, uh, 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 Grecian, Roman, Arabian, Persian, and even Sidereal. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. That wasn't my point. Was I know the astrology is the same, just like pretty much everything is the same on a globe model, except for the theories and crap. For example, they give you uh, the, the names of the planets. They give you the, the signs. They give you, I'm not, I'm saying that the deities, the way we interpret the deities, for example, the Egyptians spoke about Saturn, just like the Greeks when we deal with astrology, but they interpreted these deities different. The Egyptians didn't have, necessarily a 
Jesus or Jupiter. So like one of their deities for Saturn was Set. Set is the root word of Saturn or Set. So, and you will see that he's dark. He's a dark creature, but it's a lot of creatures that they had dealing with. Uh, yep. Saturn. True. And you, you see what I'm saying? So it's just the deity. So that's why I kind of, when you say about like, uh, like I don't have a concept of time. When I, I think there is no time. I think it's per, per C. I think we all on our own clock. But um, yes. for example, yes. can I can I ask? Um, can I ask? Is there is there relevance? I mean, my understanding is that our calendar has been completely messed with, mm -hmm. and so like the new the idea of the new year should be April, should be April, right? Instead of January. Or was it March? I thought it what was is, March. What is, what is the relevance? Would you, what, what is the relevance, would you say, from changing the new year from uh, April to January? Oh, that's quite simple. Um, uh, the January beginning, January 1st, was pinned there by the Julio Gregorians, um, whereas the April 1st uh, beginning date, which is pinned to the 21st of March, the equinox, as which is uh, relevant in terms of an actual pattern. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, but so is the Capricorn. The, the, the Aries one is relevant to astrology because everything begins at the top of the head, um, which is where Aries begins in the cerebrum and finishes at the feet where mm -hmm. Pisces is. Therefore, that's the true astrological beginning, the equinox, March the 21st. Hence, you count 10 days after that, which gives you April 1st. Hence, the Romans and the Jesuits said about ridiculing the English and the Russians and the Germans who kept the, the beginning of the year pinned to April 1st, the natural calendar, the spiritual calendar, and not the Capricorn secular Roman calendar, which is also a good calendar, but it's secular. And so they called those ones April Fools. Yeah. Right? To, right. to stop people. To, to stop people. Yes. And so yeah. these are... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought y'all was finished. Go ahead. I'm finished. Yeah, yeah, go. What? So when you say Saturn is polo, and uh, polo is dealing with polar, or like the pole energy, or the spinal cord, the balancing. Our spinal cord splits our body right in the middle, just like Saturn is split. It's a ball that split right in the middle. I'm trying to see if there any connection with this stuff because Saturn uh, also means seven. Saturn is seven or Sabbath, and Septos dealing with September. I was trying to see could that have anything to do with the uh, New Year of the Witch, which is Septos. And this September, yep. we had that alignment as well. Yep, yep. September is Libra, rule, um, ruled by uh, uh, Venus, but uh, exalted by Saturn. Of course, Saturn exalts in Libra because that's where set is the sunset on the daily ecliptic of the sun. So, always, everywhere, when you see the sun setting, so-called, and it disappears... That's where Libra begins every day. Where you see, where you see mm. Horus on the horizon rising, that is Aries. At the moment you see the sun pop its head above that Horus rising sign, pop point. And this is the symbolic signs daily, every day. So you've got Horus, the sun, which exalts in Aries. And you've got his opposer, Saturn, Set, who is um, exalting where the deacon of Libra is lupus, the wolf, the wolf of darkness. So every day by the wolf. If you look at all the deacons, you can tell all the stories of all gospels of everything that ever, ever existed. Nursery rhymes, mm -hmm. fairy tales, mm -hmm. everything. Hollywood scripts, president speeches, 
every thought you ever made. Hey, See? Hey, you know Santa, Santa, would you be yep. would you be interested in um contributing to Flat Revival magazine? magazine? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I would if you if you I would love to, I would love to hear I would love to hear I would love to have you I would love to have you contribute to the magazine hit me up at flatrevival at gmail.com Yeah for sure um, now, another point that, that, what, what, yeah. can, can I build on something? Can I say real quick? Now you said that uh, Saturn has, has a lot to do with. Let me get a. We got a big fee. We got a big fee. Somebody has to. I just said something. Somebody said something. Some kind of echo is going on. Aaron B and Ty, just mute for a minute. Just mute because that was just incredible. Sorry, I had to say something. Me too. So, That's why I said it. Too much of an yeah. ego. It's almost an herbal. Yeah. Sorry, who was so, talking? One by one. One by one. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to uh, try to tie in some of my, uh, see what Santos think about some of the research I was stumbling on in my research time. Uh, dealing with Saturn. Dealing with Saturn. Oh, oh so, uh, bro, Sanchez. Bro, Sanchez, uh -huh. before you go, by the way, um, I'm glad you cleared that up about what you meant about the ancient Egyptian meanings because they are the true meanings, okay? The meanings that the astrologers, the, Heli the Copernican revolution type are teaching today, they are all wrong, okay? Because oh. they do not include, they're not syncretous. They do not include theology in astrology. I don't do a reading unless God and all its, his archetypes, his, her archetypes are um, expressed through the reading. These are the gods. Yeah, when you're looking at where's your Jupiter in the chart, and where's your sun in the chart, you're looking at archangelic beings. Huh? Our archons, our, our our leaders, our leaders back to cause, our brothers, mm -hmm. our helpers, the Potters of Memphis, the ones that are, are, are making this show go on. Okay, these are not just you know, these Copernican astrologers. They'll tell you that the moon's a rock, and the astronauts that went up there to play golf. Well, they also brought some some of that moon rock down here. It's a solid rock. It looks like it, doesn't it? You know, um, that's the type of astrologers that are kicking around today, and I'm kicking their butts by exposing them because they're upside down spinners, Copernicans, and most of them they're all. Uh, flesh eaters, dead corpse eaters. Never you know, was there a time when you know, the r real astrologers would ingest the dead carcasses of our brothers. You can't have carcass breath and be upside down Copernican and call yourself an astrologer. So correct, brother. Yes, the Egyptian interpretations. Learn those. You can't have carcass breath. That's damn right. That's damn right. That's damn right. Yeah. That's not an astrologer. That's a that's a carcass cruncher. Yeah, you're right. That's a sick minded right. fella. That's a sick and, you know, fella. And they oh, and, and they doing that's stuff. They doing stuff. That's yeah, I agree with you on that one. Yeah, I agree they, with you on that one. They totally some different that's, than we are. Totally that's some awesome. different that's than that's we are. That's someone's talking. I think that's important. Yeah. Yes, it's me. Oh, done. Sorry. Got it. Got it. You just, I think to stop that Santos, you just cut off the YouTube video since you're on a panel. You may be still watching it on YouTube while you're on a panel. You can shut the YouTube off and that'll, shut the YouTube off and that'll. No, I'm not. I'm not. But I've got it. Oh. I'm, I'm mute. Oh. I know that. Yep. Done. Okay. Well, look, let it's me fixed. Let, let me pick let me pick your mind some more about Saturn if y'all don't don't mind because I've been waiting to. The, uh, because I, some of the most popular videos on YouTube and what got me caught up into a lot of conspiracy and spookism was the whole Saturn tricks and the Saturn moon matrices and all of this. And so I started researching about Saturn because remember I had that dream when I was little. So when I was hearing about the Saturn moon matrix, it was mostly from a guy named Quasi Luminous. I ain't gonna lie. He had me scared in the motherfucker with the whole Pac-Man <laughs> eating you and recycling out the death. So I went to researching this stuff and I found out that the moon eating you and the recycling, you getting eight just mean the number eight, which is infinity or the hourglass. It's not time, it's infinity. And it's coming in and out of existence through the womb and you getting eight by the darkness. That's why it's the number eight. 
And it ain't necessarily that the moon eating you. It's that the moon is kind of like a representation of this whole balance that the darkness create. So uh, one, one thing I found out when I dealt with Saturn was that Saturn is Satan and Satan has a trident that, that deals with balance. And uh, Satan also is a form of the ancient mother goddess that they hid, which was ancient womb worship. So when you talk about Jesus and the devil, it really is supposed to be Jesus and his woman, man and woman. So it can be masculine and feminine, but the patriarchs also had a thing against the woman. So they turned it to be Jesus and another guy when really it's really the balance is man and woman and there's really no evil and good. It's really just, you know, energy. And we can make a hell of heaven based on what we do with it. So I think that's the whole concept of free will. But when you talk about the renewing energy and things becoming new and I knew, you think about a neutron just like a new moon, the centering agent. And a, a neutron would be at the center of the cell. So I think the ancestors was on the sum with the Saturn, the, the balance, you know, being the ball, Lance, or the Lance ball. And uh, I think Saturn is, is different than what they're trying to tell us with the spooky stuff. I think it's something we need to probably look more into. But uh, I'm going to leave y'all with that because, Santos, with because one thing Santos brought up was how Saturn is linked to how the alignment of Libra is linked to the sunsets and that the sunsets is, is the word set is dealing with Satan or Satan. But um, the moon phases is dealing with that. And one more thing I'm going to point out and I'm going to turn it back over to you, Santos, is when you talk about the connection between Saturn and Libra and Libra is liberty or balance, freedom, heaven, evenness. And uh, its connection with, with Saturn is that they say, let freedom ring and ring is what saturn has so you know when you think a bell a ball is all dealing with this uh saturn is like saturn venus and libra is like a trinity of the same the goddess porter that they call it or the celtic knot or some of that nature but i would like to hear what santos think about that Okay, man, I've got a lot of thoughts for you because you've mentioned some beautiful points. Okay, so Saturn we know is Libra, September, set, timber. And so that's where the sun sets. And set is seven, Saturn is also Shiva, Shabbat, Sabbath, the Sabbath day, Saturn day. So we have this uh, sevenness about Saturn, the Libra sign where he exalts and Libra means to liberate. And from the rings of Saturn, we are liberated. That's what Libra is. That's why it's there because it liberates the sun into the night and Saturn then extends his hospitality to the, the, the bottom part of the ecliptic. He's the ruler of coldness and darkness and he rules in Capricorn and Aquarius, which are all down there in the winter. And there's Libra in autumn where Saturn begins, you see? So what we have is Saturn take away S a and you're left with turn because L means Elohim means turners twisters so saturn has a son called jupiter the taurus field he's the bull that's Baal. okay then their daddy anu uranus the heavens that's the trilogy that's the trinity the heavens uranus castrated by his son time chronos castrated by his son space jupiter expansion jesus the savior so in order to get back to the heavens you see, we go back to the tree of life, which is the constellation that is in Triangulum, uh, which consists of 29 stars. And that's where creation begins in the pineal so, gland, so 29 mm -hmm. being the number of all the letters of the alphabet. And according to the box saga, the original language had 29 letters. So in English, we dropped three of those and are using a 26 system, which is the Elohim system. Elohim comes to 52 in Gematria. El comes to 13, which is half of 26, which is half of 52. Uh, 26 is the number of um, uh, God in Gematria. Uh, Jehovah, Yod Hevaheh, comes to 26. Uh, Aleph 
comes to 26. So what we have here in the tree of life is the original Hebrew letters. They have a 22 system and they have a 29 system. And these are the words, the verbs of creation from the tree of life. And so Anu has his two sons, the two energies which you're talking about. One is uh, expansive, one is constrictive. And this is the forever uh, uh, energy system of the universe. Adam the pulse you know, and Eve I, the wave. Can I, can I ask you something? When you say Anu has, it, has his Anu has, uh, has two his, sons, uh, two sons. Um, we're getting the echo again, um, Santa. We're getting the echo again, Santa. Let me get your I got it. Thank you. When you say Anu has two sons, I was researching about this. And I was realizing that Anu is a patriarchal, patriarchal form of the goddess Nut. And you said that Egyptians had the correct deities. So that's why I go before Anu and I go to Nut because Nut has a womb. She was able to give birth. But when the patriarchal gods like Anu came along, when you start reading how they gave birth to life, it was in sick ways when men don't have wombs. So in a lot of these six stories, some of these deities was impregnating themselves. But in the earliest ancient conceptions, there was simply a divine womb, which come from all things, which was just simply darkness, which is the canvas of life represented by Saturn or Satan. When you said turn, that's the energy that's turning the heavens at the center of the pole. When you say, where is heaven? I think is at the center of the earth, which is at the center of the human which is the heart chakra, but interesting concepts here because um, it's deep stuff. We know that this is associated with the equinox and that uh, echo, you mean equality or balance. Um, another form of equality would be the equal sign and that would be the number 11 and L is that God again that's dealing with Saturn. When you say 11, you're saying a railroad track, that's something that's parallel and L is at the end of parallel. So this is a balancing deity we talking about. When you speak to somebody, you say hello, L-O, and the H is silent, so it's really L-O or hello, which is really halo, or the planet Saturn, which is a halo or ball length balance. And uh, if you think about the Antarctic ice ring, you think about the goddess Nut, she would be that, that outer uh, halo or that ring barrier representing this darkness with the night sky or nut sky or the things where all things renew itself through this balance when we say new that's nut or newt and uh that's what i was saying yeah, because well, you know it's interesting stuff when you go to egypt and think about nut yeah well you are 100 percent correct um you know uh nut is anu uh Anu is Anna. Anna is um, the root word for lamb or you. So you have uh, uh, <clears throat> Eve is, uh, if you put two V's in there, you get a double V, which we call a double U. And hence Eve is the U because Adam is the lamb, the lamp of the universe. So Anu is Nut. Yes, the heavens, the sky, the heavens. And so it's the womb from the black light, which is Saturnian. The reason why we see Saturn's rings, because all planets have rings, but you can't see them. Why? Well, because Saturn is the only planet that is perfectly aligned, perpendicular, 90 degrees from its axis to its spin axis. And that's why the uh, inertial plane, which is what those rings are, is manifesting in our eyes, to our eyes. Whereas Jupiter's is, rings are much more massive than, than Saturn. This is a known a fact but you can't see them because they're see, all Taurus fields. Saturn is turning Elo, El, the Elohim twister. That's it, twister. Elohim means twister. Yeah, and, and his son, Thor, the Taurus field, Taurus field, is the magnetic light, which is doing the opposite of what Saturn is doing, <clears throat> um, which is uh, the, the Taurus um, rotating field, okay? Tor, backwards, is rot, rotating. So it's all turning and rotating energy, and they're, uh, they're, they're turning against each other, and they have to. Satan must be there. If Satan is not there destroying Shiva, 
is not destroying the work of, uh, you know, of Vishnu, let's say, or Brahma, the creator, which would correspond to Jupiter, um, <clears throat> then no work would be done in the universe. So, Nut is Anu, is Uranus, is all the other archetypes. Car is, a uh, car in English is Machina in Italian, is Vatua in French, is Coche in Spanish, is Carro in Portuguese. But it's still the same thing that we are referring to. Mm -hmm. Let us not be deceived, brothers. Let us not be deceived. There's only one theology, theology, theological system in the universe. One. That's There's true. only one system. And you know There's what? Not the more, two. And you know, the more I talk to you, the more I see that uh, this syncretism is very deep and that we're on the same page because earlier you, you mentioned that 26 was the number of God. Uh, it goes back to, well, I would say it's the number of the goddess, but like we said, we ain't going to get caught up in semantics. Um, 26 equal out to eight. Equal out and again, eight is the hour. Eight is the uh, goddess Ishtar. If you pull up the mother goddess Ishtar, she's shaped like the eight, not because the ancestors was making her, making fun of her. They making her shape that funny way to symbolize an hourglass. Like you said, two V's is a double U. But it's also a X. When you take those two V's and stack them, you get the X, which is the X chromosome, the hourglass, or the number eight. It's the bow tie that the Masons wear. And the bow tie is really the bow tie. The B and the V are the same. So the B can be replaced with the V. So when we say the bowls of the earth, we can say the vowels or the vowels is the bowels, the bends. Um, and I'm saying this for the people because when we talk about Nut being Saturn, think about it. We have to bend down and take a knee to make a vow. And that bending is what Nut is doing with her back. The bending is what the football players doing. This is symbology that they doing in the NFL when you bend in the knee. I'm sorry about that, guys. Hold on a minute. With the bowing down, same with when we do have our teepees here in our powwow time. We have, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah so I, I was uh, saying that the whole bending and the um, the outer barrier of the, of the ice ring, you know, dealing with the uh, covering of Nut, which is the covenant. And, you know, when we make our covenants with our woman, we have a wedding and we give them a ring like Saturn and we bend like Nut for to make the bow or the vow. The, you know, so I think this this is going to be a dope one. I'm going to actually take this and re-upload it because Santos being here helped me tie into some more stuff because I just thought about it. If you think about the seven wandering stars, Saturn is the seventh one, and seven means Saturn. Seven is Saturn. So like the seven chakra is the crown chakra, and crown is Kronos. But time is an illusion because that hourglass is really infinity. So instead of us saying construction and deconstruction, that's getting caught up in the polarity instead of the pole. That's like if I take you to a, a forest and you say you see a bunch of trees instead of one forest. So instead of us saying construction and deconstruction, there is no two things. There's only one thing, recreation. And that's what the recycle symbol is all about. Recycling is Saturn, the number eight. But what I was saying, what I wanted to point out also was, uh, you know, that's the covenant that we are immortal. And like we always say, energy can't cease to exist. That's a covenant represented by a covering to being nut. But uh, one thing I'm going to say also is Jehovah. The, the last word is OVA, OVA, O-V-A dealing with the ovaries of, of, of the ovaries of the woman. Jesus on the cross is actually the uterus of the woman. And they hid the worship of the womb behind all of these patriarchal deities. But man and woman both come from the womb, which is the centering agent, the darkness, the one in the center, uh, that vortex, you know. So I think that one of the big deceptions along with the global deception was removing the uh, womb from the center of the ancient cosmos because the mother goddess was replaced with Santa Claus and a bunch of more uh, patriarchal deities that's hiding the stuff that I'm saying now behind a bunch of devil talk and, you know, boogeyman stuff. But, you know, what y'all think about that? 
I, I agree. Well, I agree. Yep, spot on, brother. Spot on. So many beautiful thoughts. Um, when you mentioned the ovaries, you see, that's what Anu means. It means ovaries, okay? Ovus is Anu, the lamb. Ovus. The ovine is the lamb, okay? Look at the ovaries of a woman. They look like a, a lamb, a, a ram. You look at the cerebran in your brain and the fornix and the, the uh, lateral pillars of the fornix and the third ventricle, it's the ram. It's the ovaries. It's the ovus. It's in you because those archetypal energies are in the arc of the ecliptic. So in the arc of Aries for 30 degrees, it will produce Aryans. I'm Aryan. And if, if you can't see the Aryan uh, features on, in me and, and my nature, you're missing a whole bunch about me. So sun in Aries will produce the lamb. Okay. Uh, sun in Taurus will produce that archetype because that's where the sun is in that arc. The type. It's typology. So it is the ovaries, Anu, the lamb. And so um, Saturn is dark light. Yes, but Saturn is also Lucifer. And Lucifer means light carrier. Lucy, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Yeah, it's the rainbow. Lucifer is the electromagnetic spectrum of seven colors. That's Shiva. Because those colors from red to violet and uh, uh, so nothing infrared or nothing ultraviolet, the rainbow, just that electromagnetic spectrum, which is all that we can see of the infinite spectrum of light that there is, that is the creator of the material world, that rainbow spectrum, the arc of Noah, the bark of Noah, the arch of the ecliptic of Noah, Anu, the annual, the one who makes the annual event of the year, you see? So Lucifer, Shiva, the seven musical notes, the seven colors of creation, sound and light, sonoluminescence, audio and video, funny how they both end with God. One is to hear and one is to see. It's a sound and light show. It's sonoluminescence. And that's Saturn and Jupiter, you know, turning and touring, Taurus fields. That's what's going on. Everything is rotating and spiraling. Adam is the pulse. Eve is the wave. That's why Atum has a T in it, which is a pulse, because you can't sustain it. And M, which is a lateral, uh, 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 a liquid, is sustainable. T, mm, D, mm. Where do you say Adon, Aten, Atum, Amun? Uh, well, our moon's different. It's a lunar energy. The solar energy always must have a T or a D. T or a D. Sometimes B, because B is the number two. And, and, so, and it's, it's not sustainable. B, B, Bhagavan, God, Bhagavad, Buddha. All right? G, go, go, God. D, D, divine. See, you can see God in all those pulse words but not in the liquids because they're feminine it's the wave so energy sound goes explodes and then waves out and produces the universe phenomena from mind noumena comes matter phenomena saturn and jupiter they're doing all the work in their polarities, red and blue. Saturn is always red, Jupiter is always blue. And see, and, and I agree with you if you look at Saturn and Jupiter simply as, like you say, it's just another way of saying yin and yang. And when you say yin and yang, you're saying Saturn. Like, if you say brother, sister, where did they both come from? Womb, which is Saturn. So like when I say, uh, here you say, so the thing about Saturn and Jupiter is like Adam and Steve. It's like, if you say yin and yang, that's man and woman. But when you say Saturn and Jupiter, it's, it, it's, it's, that's what was confusing me because I was looking for the Adam and Eve. See, the Adam and Eve is masculine, feminine, neutron. Because if you got left and right, 
that brings about center. You can't have center without left and right. Just like the spinal cord is the single thing in the body that's erect and it stands in between left and right, just like the serpent on a tree in the garden in between masculine and feminine. Um, basically what I'm saying is the sun and moon is, is, is man and woman, both coming from the womb. So the sun and moon is both revolving around what? That pole. Now, when you say Aten or Aten, that became the root word of attention. And you stand up upright like a pole when you stand at attention because the root word is tent, dealing with the triangle because the pole is what supports the triangle in the middle. That's what makes you, us cast the tent. When the woman makes the man erect it based on her magic, you know, she erects the tent. This is uh, as above, so below, but attention erection is the same thing resurrection renewal uh based on a woman working her antenna antenna is also aten when we talk about uh us opening that pineal gland which is our antenna to this divine womb and we do it by closing our eyes going into our own womb behind our eyelids which also shaped like an oval dealing with the ovaries that over root again dealing with over like you said god is within us and we access it by closing our eyes and we go inside of ourselves and bring forth new things new creations that uh shape our reality and new is something that we can't escape when we say energy can't cease to exist that mean the only thing that really exists is new or darkness you know uh we come in and out of it and when you look at new she's the background or the most high not if you look at the egyptian cosmology santos you said which is the most accurate nothing in the cosmology is more most higher than nook she's the ceiling above our head the roof that protects us and if she's the ceiling that's also a covenant or a cover covering because your ceiling is a seal that you do on the back of an envelope and when you say you envelop something, you encompass that whole thing. And when you encompass something where well, you're dealing with the North Pole, everything point to where we can't escape or where we must come past. The one that envelops the cosmos or the great seal, the great ceiling that protects us, this covering of covenant. If you look at an envelope, when you lick it, you're using your DNA to seal it together. That's a representation of the mother's mitochondrial DNA. And, uh, when you lick that thing, you lick it in a direct center. X marks the spot where the North Pole would be. You put your DNA. And that X is also the bull's eye or the bell's eye, the, this ball, this balance that we're talking about. And I've just been seeing how they wanted to get all of this stuff into spookism. Like when we say Lucifer, it, I found out that that's really Lou Cipher. And the cipher is a cycle. You know, and, and it's it's just crazy how the more I study the devil and all of this Saturn and darkness, the more I find out about this ancient mother goddess who has beautiful concepts, you know, that was hidden behind all of this. Yeah, brother, um, the, the boy is the girl is the boy is the girl. Madam is Adam. OK, if you write Madam, I'm Adam. It will say the same thing in reverse. So what you have is you have Adam and his dame. You see, the lad is a lady. Don is Donna. Uh, Adonis is Denise. You see, in every word, there is three genders. There must be because a word cannot be of its own uh, uh, gender isolated. There, there's the, the trinity is of three genders. There's a, a masculine, feminine, and a neuter gender. You see, so with Adam, Adam is quite easily to become a madam. Yeah, uh, uh, Hayden is a maiden. Um, you, you can do this with literally tens and tens of words, and you see it in Robert and Roberta. Yeah. Um, uh, so when you said uh, uh, 26, you see it as 2 plus 6 is 8. Yes, yes. So now we've found a feminine uh, purpose for the number 26. But this is the, uh, the mystery of the universe. The Godhead is a divine couple, Krishna Radha. 
You see, they don't hide it in the West that God is balanced, is balanced in his, his uh, Godhead. Um, here we have cast aside the feminine. And so when I'm using Saturn and Jupiter as, as the two polarities of the universe, as you would the sun and the moon, as you would Mars, Venus, as you would all these other twins, um, you, you are seeing that the boy is, is also the girl. It's as en any energy expresses itself from the zero point of transcendence called counter space. Um, it's, which is black and white light, yin and yang, which is also called Janus and Jambres in the Bible, the two serpents that were devoured by the one. Yeah, because unity, or as you said, the pole and polarity, and that was a good point. <laughs> unity swallows up duality. And Pythagoras called it duality in unity. Whereas Aristotle would have called it unity in duality. So it depends on your, your, your point of view and how you're looking at it. But you see, um, if you're looking for only masculinity in Saturn, uh, you'll, be, you'll be deceived. It, this is not how it works. Uh, Krishna becomes Radha. You see, in Bhagavad Gita, um, uh, uh, I forget which canto, but um, uh, it says that the moon represents Krishna. You see, clearly. You see, they're more honest in the West, in the East. In the West, they've hidden it. Everything's hidden so that Jesus now becomes a literal man, you see, and we can't see now through the, the, the glass darkly because they've muddied the waters, you see. And so mm -hmm. we can't see that Christus Christ is, is, is the radiating sun in the heavens as it always has been. It is the Saviour who rises every morning. You see, but there they will tell you that Radharani is the sun radiating and that Krishna is the moon. You know, here we, we laugh at this, these conclusions. We laugh at the spiritual insights and wisdom because they think that the, the Bible <laughs> is a book of facts, whereas it's, it's a book of truth. And so the truths that are expressed in there are, are always, um, uh, uh, um, uh, hide themselves to their eyes. I mean, th they will never you, see them. You see, they don't have eyes to see. You know. So they will always be know, hidden. You know, Santos, you bring up a good point because what yep. the Bible did was took away our sovereignty in so many ways by uh, giving us the uh, literal, historical, like you take away the the physical Jesus that everyone believing in and you get this, the, the celestial objects back involved with the Bible, what, what I think is necessary because one thing we'll find when we go to Genesis is that they curse the womb. The Garden of Eden is a story I challenge all Christians and biblical centered people to go back and look and think about what happened because we left a time of sovereignty or what they call a golden age and you know that Gold is AU on a periodic table, and you brought up Atum, which is dealing with autumn, which is dealing with autonomous autonomy, which is sovereignty when we was in autonomous style villages. Ah is, is, is what, we, what we say awesome, dealing with gold, uh, which is dealing with the mother goddess or the womb, which is gold, the gold or honey, when we tell our woman, you know, you my honey. So... When we talk about the bee goddesses, the bee reverence, that's dealing with the matriarchy and the queen bee. When you talk about Noah, Noah is a patriarchal concept of an Asiatic goddess called Nua. Her name was Nua, and they got a city in New Jersey named after her called Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey is dealing with the new art or Nua. If you pull up this goddess, I want to share my screen. But if you Google Nuwa, you'll see that she's half woman and half snake. And that goes back to the devil. She became the devil, but she's really the diva. No older uh, religion or spirituality in Mother Nature can predate the worship of the womb that man and woman come from, which was cursed. And when you say curse, that's dealing with the root word C-U-R, which is the root word of cure. The things that they curse are the cure. And even when you write your signature, you write it in cursive writing because that's the signature, that's the ceiling. That's all dealing with the womb because the great seal, 
our family crest was based on a matriarch system, but they hijacked our inheritance with, with their new cosmology and this new world order thing. And uh, but the whole thing about it is new walk is new water, dealing with that uh baptism and renewing energy. But uh at the same time, you know, it's deep because you talk about the two serpents that were swallowed. That's dealing with the serpent goddess. If you Google serpent goddess, you'll see a lady with her breast exposed and uh, with her, sometimes she have her mouth open like Mama Callie, but in her hands is two serpents and she devours those. That means left brain, right brain, you know, meet pineal gland or center brain. You know, higher self, lower self must marry to become center self. You know, and I found out in a lot of my life, it was about us getting chaos. It, they seeded chaos by getting us caught up into the polarities instead of the pole. They got us caught up into sun and moon instead of the thing that they're circuiting around because that's the center. They got us caught up into the root chakra or the crown chakra instead of the heart chakra. Or they got us caught up into the devil and God, which is man and woman, instead of the womb with their cursing in the hospital that messes up the child before it even has a chance. So our lives is dictated by things that happen in that womb before we even have a chance. So the mother is in a very powerful position. Don't forget, you guys, everybody starts off female. That's true. Before That's you true. go here, you know, you guys were all start off female. That's you know? deep. That's deep right there because everything is dealing with the woman having them curves and they curse the curves that see you are, but she's the cure. And uh, when you talk about the flower of life, that was a writing style that became cursive writing. Why is it cursive writing? Why does it have to be cursed? Because it has the curves like the woman, you know, and it's dealing, you even have to write in this. When you write in the um, cursive writing, you're writing like the serpent. And the pen is the pole. So when you look at the medical symbol with the pole, with the serpent wrapped around the pole, when you go and sign a document, the pen is the pole. Your signature is the serpent. Everything acts out like this. It's the needle and the stream or the nut and the gab because a uh, gab is the needle or the penis, the penetrator, and a woman is the venus or the nut, the absorber. And everything is, is this way, implosion, explosion, or like Santos say, Saturn and Jupiter, which is another way of saying negative and positive, which gives us neut neutrality or nut. Uh, and I think that that's what we got to get back to, that centering force. But the root word of center is sin. So again, the things that's good for us became bad, and that's why the world's so chaotic today, because we need to be centered. But when you go to talking about the deities that's related to centering, they say that that's sin, that's the devil, but it's really the diva, you know, the, the, the mother with the scales. And the scales is also what the serpent has because his skin pattern is a form of balance as well because the hexagon, you know, is what they link to Saturn as well. But this stuff, it, it gets real deep, you know. Uh, I don't want to haul the uh, mic. But if you look at the word woman, take the W off, you get omen. And we know that that's a prophetic event dealing with a, some form of a covenant as well. But uh, yeah, let me just mute my mic uh, and see what y'all think about, about this stuff. Well, I'll let someone else jump in oh, because I've got a lot well yeah well i can i can comment um because that was that was pretty good stuff man that was incredible yeah curve curse woman omen you see <clears throat> it's it's obviously ludicrous to unbalance the relationship in nature which is the godhead krishna radha why would you remove radha well this is the stupidity of man and the evil of man see um, you know, we even, we curse our own half of our own creation, you know, in our effort to, uh, keep control of one modality of expression, which is the masculine expression, because it brings so much profit to businessmen and, uh, and, 
uh, colonizers and empire, how you can steal, you know, property, land off indigenous people as you go conquering their, their, their places and putting up your corporate churches and under Jesus' name, etc. You know, this is how these things go on because the goddess has been desecrated. You know, uh, in Hindu scriptures, they tell you that of the names of God, there is none more powerful than Radharani. And yet everyone worships Krishna because Krishna is, is God. But the, their expression is, of the gods, Rama's name is most powerful. But Vishnu's is ten times greater. But Krishna's is ten times greater than that. And then when it comes to Radha, it's a million times greater than Krishna's. Why? <clears throat> well, because Krishna expresses resting light, which is the potential of power. And Radharani is the opposite expression, which is magnetism, which is power. Movement, mag in Sanskrit is to move. Therefore, we have the two, the two co-eternal conjugate principles of the universe. Force and motion on one hand, which is feminine, Radharani, and inertia and acceleration on the other hand, which is Krishna. Krishna becomes Christ, Christ becomes crest, crest becomes rest. It's the resting light. It's rest and motion. And the motion is Radharani. And why are we uh, pretending that the goddess energy uh, does not exist? Or why are we excluding it from our functions? Why don't we embrace this modality? You see, because if, if everything's masculine, we can go about punishing and not rewarding and and it's and you can get taxes are a form of punishment it's a land tax you see and and fines oh you, you were speeding here's 150 dollars that's an indulgence an indulgence an indulgence comes from the inquisition which the elite families set up you know pay your way to heaven so a, a car fine is an indulgence and so we are paying and paying and paying you see and so this system is, is patriarchal. It's masculine. It's punishment system. It's a demerit system, you know, merit system rather than, you know, like, uh, yeah. And so they, they're happy to punish you. They're not going to, a, a policeman's not going to pull you over and say, look, you were doing 10 Ks, 10 miles under the limit. And it was, you know, not very good weather. So congratulations. Oh, you know, I'm going to issue you some merit points. Well done. You know, I, I'm here to protect you, you know that, and goodbye, have a nice day. It's not going to happen because that happens in matriarchy. And everywhere where the Jesuits went, they destroyed matriarchy. The Mayans had it. <laughs> There's evidence the Aztecs had it. Uh, the Aborigines certainly did. They won't deny it. They do not deny it. The, 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 the matriarch of the tribe rules. I've seen it myself. When I was Jehovah's Witness, I went to Northern Territory to witness, quote, unquote, to the Aboriginals. And I went to towns that were never preached to before. And I saw the behavior in those villages and how um, the, the matriarch of the tribe <laughs> were kicking the butts of all the men, all of them, and telling them what to do. Okay, and everything functioned well and does function well. It's matriarchy here on this land. That's the law of this land. Okay, sovereignty, matriarchy. Um, when when uh, Cook came over here with his Jesuit bandana, the Union Jack, and planted that flag, well, he, all he was saying was, well, we're just going to do uh, commerce under this banner, um, you know, and it's maritime law, admiralty law, but we won't, you know, interfere with the sovereignty law. Well, they did because they're liars, uh, but the point is they should not have. And so this is the point. Um, <clears throat> Matriarchy is not about women kicking men's butts. It's, it's about everybody realizing that we don't, we balance out the two modalities, you know. Men can get shit done, you know. They can build freaking, <laughs> you know, some scary high houses. And, you know, <clears throat> women tend to, you know, be a little bit more nervous than that. And they love, uh, you know, other modalities of expressing and creating and building, you know. So we can help each other, you know. And when we're balanced, we're beautiful. 
and this is it. We've got to bring the balance back. Bal is bail, balance. Okay. And that's deep because balance is, like I said, that go back to Saturn. And you know something? Saturn is the end. It's, it's symbolizes completion because after seven, what happens is you reach the hourglass and that's eight. And after that, you reach the femi nine and you end up at the binary code repeating yourself again with one and zero or Saturn, which is one and zero. And I think that it being the seventh, uh, uh, wandering star is deep too because um, it's the cornerstone or the ending. The band, the four bands that's at the base of the pyramid, and seven times four is 28, which is 10. And you spoke about that potential, you know, that each one of us got to uh, resurrect our structures and our realities, whatever it may be. The man being a builder but him also going inside of the feminine creative energies inside of himself, which is the architecture, because the architecture is the art or the one that being the, the nut. So when you go to create, you bend, because what happens is you close your eyes and you think, and you can invent something new. Or when I write a new song, I like to close my eyes a minute and go in that darkness and think, and you bend in your eyelids uh, because that's the covenant. You know, that's how all things come into existence out of that womb. And uh, I think that's that's really deep because register, when we register, like I said, how we sign with the signature, with the root word is R-E-G, dealing with regal, something royal, and uh, also dealing with something regular or something balanced. And uh, it's showing you that Ma'at is Libra or Liberty, them scales, which is also Saturn because let freedom ring like we give to women. But what I was saying is, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite bills I've ever done because Santos bringing a lot of stuff that's happened to tie a lot of stuff together. When I was thinking about woman and omen, and uh, you think of something else you have in there, which is very consistent, even in the word womb and tomb, which is the same thing according to the ancients. It's the word om, O-M, which is another om, how we meditate, you know, even amen, you know. But, um, you know, ramen, ramen, like That was news. also the first sound, the first sound for our culture was om, mm -hmm. that was the very first sound. And see, and that's, that's, that's deep right there because it's also in ramen, and we say ramen, you know, a lot of people say noodles, but when you think about it, I know it's a simple food, but it's telling a story because noodles is can be spelled in you. And if you look at them, it's, it's a wavy pattern dealing with this squiggly serpent energy. So everything has like meaning and I'm starting to put like even small things together the more I deal with this, this stuff. Because like man and woman, I've become to see as conscious and subconscious. Women represents the invisible uh, thing that predates the physical thing. So like the idea in the mind of the artist is the original copy. What you see on a canvas is the second copy, the original one. He's basically transporting it from his mind to the canvas. But even if you tear, tear up the canvas and, and set the paint on fire, that copy is still in his mind. So when he, what he created in the darkness is what's eternal. Therefore, you can burn up all the pictures of all the Mona Lisas on earth and it'll still come in and out of existence because the idea have now been created in darkness, which is the original copy. So I think it's a big connection between us and that darkness, the imagination realm and the dream realm. Yeah, brother, the dream world is the wave, Eve, and the pulse is the dielectric uh, transcendental counterspatial unlimited unqualified realm from which we come you see um, we drip out of the heavens and we molecularize <laughs> that is not even a word but i mean <laughs> that's but, no, but, but you, you're right yeah, another way we can yep, say it is we we, we um we, um, we explode and implode we explode and implode 
Just like yep. we inhale and exhale, like we, we do a, a, a cosmic breath when we die. It's like a big inhale and exhale where you blow the breath out of these lungs in this body into the fresh new lungs of a new womb. So new water represents new waters. The Christians baptize to renew themselves because when you go inside of the ground, they lay your casket horizontal even in the even with the plane. You lay parallel because parallel is dealing with Saturn or L. So they lay your casket. Your tomb is really your womb. So when they put you in the ground, they put you in the womb of your next mama because I think when we shut our eyes, we really go back to the darkness of our next womb or new waters, new walk. Because I think we come in and out of existence based on this spiritual baptism of the waters in our mamas, our future mamas over and over again, going into the ground horizontal and rise and resurrect and back up out of the waters of baptism of your mother. Just like the church show you, they take you down horizontal like your casket lay and then you pick you back up, they say you born again. And I think that's literally what happened when they place us down horizontally to the ground, we rise back up again because energy can't cease to exist out of the waters of our uh, next mother's uh, womb, you know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to say it now. I'm, I'm seeing a new channel forming called Bro Santos. <laughs> I think you guys should do this once a week. Bro Santos, coming at you. Hey, I, hey, love, I, I love how you guys play off each <laughs> other. I honestly do. She's so silly, <laughs> bro. Bro, Santos, that's that's dope, you know. Santos, che, Santos Sanchez, or what? What the hell? There you go. <laughs> hey, that's crazy. But y'all know there's a rap song called Versace. I think the Migos made it. Versace, 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 Versace. Have you ever heard that? Sounds familiar. <laughs> My bad. Go on, pull it up. I'm going to remix that for so uh, Santos, and I'm going to do the remix. <laughs> it's going to be called Banachi. Banachi. Banachi, Banachi. <laughs> because hey, I, I, I love Santos, man. He gets me deep, um, thinking at my deep levels, man. You're right. I'm, I'm you with you. You guys that, talk though. exactly the same, man. <laughs> you guys break down every single word that you talk about. I, yeah, I I think I, you guys I, play off each other really well, and I yeah I definitely. think you guys should do a regular, you should do a regular meetup, you know where it's just you guys playing off each other because we're just all kind of sitting here hypnotized listening to you guys. And you know something, if you think about martial arts, the serpent style is when they take their hands and they keep moving it like a wave. <laughs> but 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 one thing I want to point out is because. One thing I want to point out is what makes me and Santos, what we have in common, what all of you, I think, going to have in common, too, is that when we're doing this, it's etymology, we breaking stuff down to the, the smallest particle, molecular, to where it resonates with the, the spirit in you. So, so what we're doing is um, ripping away the, the fucking veil from off of the wife and showing you Mother Nature or the signature of it all. When you say signature, remember the sigil nature, your sit, your own, everyone got their sigil nature. The symbolic, the symbolic uh, uh, interpretation of nature or sacred geometry. You know what I mean? So I think that that is the foundation of all spiritual sciences. Yeah, well, we could uh, quite easily coin a, a phrase uh, or a word um, which would suit what we're doing. And I've been using this word in my presentations for quite a while, and it is atomology, because that's what etymology is. All is atom, all is atoms. And so what we're doing is atomology. You know, we're, we're, we're obeying the... the um, the great uh, axiom of the Egyptians, all is a tum. In the Hermetica everywhere it says, all is a tum. All or a tum is the all. And so uh, etymology, <clears throat> when you look at the Egyptian root of 
you've got two roots, etimun and etimus. Uh, etimus is truth in words, hence etymology. And etimun is truth. So atum is rooted in truth. As syncretism teaches, the first principle is truth. From all things come truth. You cannot have any other principle or uh, particular or um, attribute which is not first born of truth. Truth is the creator. It's atum. Hence the meaning. And so um, uh, atomology is exactly what we're doing. You could call it syncretism and etymology, and you could call it by many different expressions, but <clears throat> essentially... It's the logos of atoms. And if you understand that all is atom, well, then everything we do is atomology. The study of words. And, and look at your uh, atom backwards is mot, which is the French word for word, mo. Um, and, and the Latin word for mata, motum. That's all Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, when you speak, you speak with your tongue, T-O-N, your aton. Uh, when you um, swallow, it goes past your tonsils, your atons, and past your dent, teeth, D-E-N, your adens. So either way, when you're making sound, there's always a den, a don, a tom-tom, a tum-tum, timbali, tambourine, timpanis. Uh, dumbek, drum, dara, um, buka, uh, all of these percussive instruments, they're all tom. Yeah, they're all got tom in them. Trombone, uh, trumpet, uh, everything has got the tum, tom, tom. And mm -hmm. it's atomic. It's an atomic mm -hmm. universe. And we've only got one thing to study, essentially. It's atomology. And, you know, I think that's amazing because if you deal with Baal and the steeple at the top of the church, which which is uh, mm -hmm. dealing with liberty. And we, you know, some, some, some of the ways we sim symbolize liberty or balance or renewal energy is by ringing the bell, blowing the horn and uh, the trumpets, which is the trunk of the tree, the tree of life or the trunk of Ganesh, the element with the elephant, uh, Ganesh, the elephant, his trunk is actually the tree of life. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, that represents the womb, or when you say Adam, and you turn it around, you get Mota or mother. And they say that all matter is made of atoms, but if you think about it, all matter is made of mothers. You were formed in your mother out of the fabric of her very flesh in the womb. And uh, I think that's very profound because if matter is mother, then it explains a lot and why the ancestors had a lot of reverence for the womb because um, like when you talk about Venus, which is related to the womb, which is also related to Lucifer, we know that that one with the trident is the mother or the balance in one ma'at. But at the same time, when we talk about Venus, the word is venues and all the women on the earth, the female species is the portal in and out of this existence through the womb of the woman. And uh, so the Venus or the venues, the women products, they call them Venus. And uh, that's really the venues, the, the, the womb is the venue. Can I say something about Venus for a second? Yeah. Um, when we do our sweat lodges here, um, our doors face the east. And when you come out of it, you're bowing down to Venus, which is, you know, um, the morning star. You're bowing down to her when you come out of it. And in the, if no one knows about sweat lodges, what they are is they are the womb. And when we're in there and you're doing your sweat and stuff like that, but that's bounces off with your, um, you know, plays up with your Venus, uh, what you were just talking about. So we bow when we come out and is bowing down to the mother, you know, to the light, the morning star. Because Venus is female, and you know, and every and it's crazy because everything ties into this matriarchal reality of our uh, uh, the cosmos. You know, is very is matriarchal in every sense in everything we do. 
And it start to bring forth balance when we start looking at the womb, if you ask me, because it's more than just a physical aspect, but it's a spiritual aspect, even an artistic one. Like when you think of your eyelids as wounds that you create out of, you know, and different things of that nature. Even when we practice yoga and meditation, when you take your index finger and, and put it together with your thumb and do what they call a sit, sit, sit sign, they do that for yoga and meditation. And uh, they really make an ayoni with their hands or a wound, you know, with their hands. So, yo, I'm loving this today because we got Santos here and we love syncretism. And today we're talking about something that they told us not to talk about, which is sin. Because when we do syncretism, we talking about something that they curse, which is sin and creep, which is making things bond like concrete. So when we sync things or practice syncretism, syncretism, that's what they don't want. That's bringing the puzzle pieces together, needle and thread, string theory, uh, making a quilt. Yeah, brother, Absolutely. and the string is the Absolutely. long. I have a question. Uh, a question. Uh, that uh, ritual you do with uh, bowing down in the morning, uh, Molina, is it a morning ritual? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was and especially, you didn't say that uh, specifically. Yeah, and, and not only that is our teepees and stuff, we have them all facing the east. Yeah. And it's all oh. for that reason. And it's all because our doors, mm -hmm. we make our doors that certain way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, and like when I we're talking about the sweat lodge, it is a repli representation of the womb. Okay. If anybody's ever been in one, it's even shaped like one and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have our uh, sunrise ceremonies here. Okay. And that's interesting. I was wondering that uh, for the, uh, asking for some uh, little extra information about it because it was uh, interesting because you have basically yeah, the oldest rituals that are still in the on the earth today because most of them are yeah. lost. But you still have them. Definitely. So we can learn a lot from them. Absolutely. I think what you brought up was uh, real profound too, Marlena, because when you talk about uh, the morning rituals and how we, I, I, I found something that nature has rituals that we do too that we sometime ignore but i may be reaching on this one like most of the time when we wake up in the morning we yawn you know and we stretch so that's two things we stretch upright and erect ourselves and we also yawn and if you think about uh when the sun rise in the morning that's when you hear all the animals you know roosters crawling and different things of that nature also when a baby comes out yeah, you hear the, you hear what I'm saying is like what new life is represented by a blowing of the trumpet or like in some cultures when a baby is born, they ring bells and blow trumpets. And I think that's significant because for the most part, when everything come into existence, it come out of its mama crying or mm -hmm. yelling, you know, and we don't do say, that when, when but, a baby's born here. We don't we don't spank them and make them cry. No, or I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying. I know I just spanking. wanted to make it clear for other people that don't understand. We beat the drum, yeah, and the drum is is Mother Earth's heartbeat. For and, us. and and that's what's up. You're right too. So you basically mm -hmm. amplify the the Earth's heartbeat so that the baby recognizes it. Right. right. And I I think there's something because you know lions roar. And I think that one of the names of the sun was Ra. And that's something we do like Ra, you know. And, and you think about it, things associated with mourning is roaring. Like when they say you mourning, you crying, or you shedding tears. And a baby being born is like it's morning, new day, or new, new light. And it comes out crying. And like you wake up in the morning yawning, and animals crying, and you know, like yelling. And when you say yell, the word L is there, which represented like the bell is a yell. When you ring the bell, it's a yell or the trumpet, which is the trunk of Ganesh or the tree of life. But we in the feast of trumpets right now. That's why Donald Trump is president. You know, that's why I was saying like, Yikes. we are, yeah, we in a crazy <laughs> time. 
I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, he's basically uh, blowing his yeah. trumpet, but he doesn't know the melody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That was just silly. I'm silly. I'm happy because I have all these great people. Hey, well, and no, you know, I get, I just got, get it silly. Well, it gets well together, silly and happiness. Yeah. Happiness hey, is oh, true love, I, right? uh, I just want to interject. I have to, I have to, um, I have to bounce. This has been, I got to tell you, this has been one of the best panels I've experienced, not just that I've been on it, but just the fact that I'm listening to it. It's been one of the best I've heard in quite some time. Much respect. I really love you all. And oh, uh, hi. no, seriously, I this has been with all the, it's all of us the, with all the nonsense going on in Flat Earth right now, I mean, I just want to say this has been a really, it's been a pleasure to be on this panel, and I think you guys are awesome, Same and I, yeah, it was a pleasure to be on this. We love you I don't too, know how. <laughs> I don't know what I contributed, but I'm just happy to be here, and I think you guys are great. Yeah, well, everybody yeah, con contributes good vibes on this panel, so you always there you go. Yourself. Good vibes. That mean, does that mean you and, yeah, you is, and Santos will get together now? You Santos, you want Santos to help you write? A, uh, I'm sorry, you would like Santos would, to write an article. I would love, I would love to have Santos uh, come on board and contribute to the magazine. I think that would be awesome. I think he has a lot of wisdom. And that goes for Bro Sanchez too. I think you both could have. Hey, I would love to have to both of you in the magazine. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm I'm just much, kidding. Much, much <laughs> 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 I was like sitting on an empty hangout. I was thinking earlier on, oh my I, goodness, the whole thing has gone wrong. And just look what's happened this evening. This is flat best. I'm so it proud. Came out wonderful. Yeah, I'm proud of you, Karen. That was a nice I really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess so I came thank back you, to everyone. Me. I I'm really happy oh, to be yeah, to have met you He's all, right. and uh, I gotta go. All right. Nice Bye. meeting you. Hey, have a good one, my brother. Care, hey, much love to you, man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. All Bye. right. Bye.